What is up guys, JPR Tech here. This is the Puerto Rican living in Japan talking about tech, photography, videography, you know, all the good things that we use in our life and in this channel we try to use them for cheap or better yet free and today I got some free hints for you guys on how to use or why to use different modes in our magic lantern and it can be a little confusing digging into the menu and seeing all the different modes and then inside those modes you have more settings and aspect ratios that just could be overwhelming to some new comers here in the magic lantern uh, camera so if you have a Canon camera that supports magic lantern this video is for you today I'm gonna be talking about the three modes that we have the one times one the one times three and the three times three modes in the magic lantern software inside the canon camera and i'm going to share my thoughts on when or why to use certain modes and how each mode really does have its benefit its pros and also their cons they all have their pros and cons so it really depends on what you're shooting how you're shooting when you're shooting that can affect or determine the mode that you should shoot in. I'm actually gonna go out, get a physical check, and in the meantime, talk to you guys about the modes, as well as showing you all the B-roll about the things that I'm talking about. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started. times one mode in this mode you want to use it when you need pixel to pixel sharpness clean lines clean edges uh, say you're shooting a cityscape city lines and you have a lot of power lines power grid hard edges with architecture and modern buildings then one times one is the way to go especially when you consider you don't really care about what focal the lens you're using or you're not like doing a vlog where you have to fit yourself in and show the environment so you need that wideness then yeah uh, stick with 1.1 or one times one mode that's going to give you the cleanest lines you can get out of magic lantern but depending again on the resolution say 3k you might have to lower your color bit a bit color bit a bit yeah, you might have to lower your color bit and but of course if you lower the resolution to 2.8k or any other of the case inside that one times one you'll probably be able to shoot in 14 bits all right and since we're gonna talk about the one times three mode i might as well switch to that mode this is the one times three mode we're doing the full resolution the 5.2k the 5.2k mode it's a very anamorphic style um, the way it bends the pixels so we get the 2.35 by one aspect ratio so it looks really cool when you're doing a cinematic footage or uh, some b-rolls uh, it's great to get those black bars at the bottom and the top of your screen but frankly it's just not that good when it comes to shooting headshots like, such as this as a vlog i much prefer something a little bit taller more vertical pixels such as the one i'm shooting right now this is the 4.8k mode at 14 bits so we're not gonna get a lot of record time it's gonna cut off really soon so i'm gonna keep it really short so 4.8k mode is just awesome it's a dciy aspect ratio uh two by one so it looks it's very close to the uh, DCI 17 by 9 aspect ratio so this one works great when you're in between doing b-rolls and also headshots such as this we can crop a little bit those black bars just fine and you'll be good to go but again check this out 1080p this is the one that's gonna give you a very realistic field of view of the lens you're shooting with so we're again with the pancake lens the 22 mil 
wide open at F2, and, and the 1080p mode is a lot wider than it was earlier shooting in the one times three crop mode. So you can see a huge difference with that using the same lens. So that's what 1080p is really cool, is uh, you could throw any lens that you want and you know you're gonna get that field of view that you intended to shoot with. And that's pretty much it guys. This is why 1080p is great. It allows you to do vlogs easily, especially with a stabilized lens. It's totally doable, this whole setup. Well guys, I'm back in the studio. I'm showing you guys why the three times three mode is also great because due to keeping that field of view, I'm able to use my Sigma 16 mil indoors in a small, tiny YouTube studio and get a get great framing as well as get depth of field in such a small area. So that's why we shouldn't just throw away 1080p just because it suffers from more and aliasing. There are workarounds. I already share a video in my channel talking about how to make the best use of this 1080p mode and I'm applying that workflow in this video as well for the 1080p clips as well as Coming soon is a part two. I'm gonna talk about my workflow in DaVinci Resolve working with all of these different modes, the one times one, the one times three, and the three times three. And I'm gonna, I might make just an individual video for the 1080p due to it being so complicated and delicate that I'll just center one video on that mode. But overall, I'll have my workflow video, which should be shorter and more concise in another time. So subscribe and don't forget to hit the little bell to let you know when a video does come up. And in the meantime, thank you guys so much for sticking around and all your comments. I really appreciate your feedback. I try to um, take them to heart, put them in mind, and also improve the quality of my videos. So I really, really appreciate your guys time and comments so thank you thank you very much Arigato gozaimashu. well that's it for me today so i hope to see you guys on a future video thank you so much and we'll see you next time happy shootings peace